How's it going everybody? Daner here with North Central Coins and welcome back to another exciting episode of the most rare and valuable coins from around the world. Today we're going to be taking a look at 5 super rare foreign coins that could be lurking in your coin jars or collections right now and if identified correctly could make you some serious money. While each of these coins are quite rare, they're not entirely out of reach, and in this video we will explore each of these valuable pieces of currency and delve into why they hold such incredible value in the world of numismatics. Additionally, we will discuss any distinguishing and identifying features, their significance among collectors, and also the potential value if you are ever to discover a legitimate example. Before I do get into this, I would really appreciate if you guys would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also ring that bell notification so you can stay up to date with my new content as it is being released. And make sure to stay to the end of the video if you would like to find out which is the most valuable of these coins that you could find. And then without further ado, what do you say we get right into it and take a look at five super rare foreign coins. Let's get it, guys. So before we get into the 1991 Noida Mint 1 rupee coin, I thought I would give you guys a brief history on coins from India. Some of the earliest coins were made of various metals like silver, copper, and gold and featured symbols, script, and motifs that represented different dynasties and regions. These coins were a testament to India's rich cultural and historical diversity. Over the centuries, India has seen multiple dynasties and rulers each leaving their mark on the country's coinage. From the punch-marked coins of the Mauryan Empire to the gold pagatas of the Cholo dynasty, coins have evolved in style and substance. The Mughal Empire, which ruled large parts of India from the 16th to 18th century, produced some exquisite coins. These coins often feature intricate calligraphy, ornate designs, and also religious symbols. During the colonial period, the British East India Company introduced their own coinage, which included the famous Anna and Rupiah denominations. They also standardized coin production in India. In the year 1947, India gained independence and the Reserve Bank of India became the sole issuer of currency. The first post-independence coins featured the lion capital of Ahsoka and other national symbols. In more recent times, coin production in India has adapted to changing technologies. Coins are now typically made of various metals including stainless steel and bimetallic compositions, both for durability and cost effectiveness. Coin designs have evolved to showcase various aspects of Indian culture, history, and achievements. From depictions of Mahatma Gandhi on commemorative coins to symbols of India's technological progress, coins tell a story of the nation's journey. To combat counterfeiting, modern Indian coins often include advanced security features like microprinting, security threads, and intricate patterns. India has several coin mints including the Mumbai Mint, Calcutta Mint, Hyderabad Mint, Noida Mint, and more. These facilities are responsible for producing coins in various denominations and metals. Coins continue to be an integral part of everyday life in India. Used for both commerce and small transactions, they are also sought after by collectors who appreciate their historical and artistic value. As of 2023, India's coin production continues to adapt to the needs of a modern economy. The nation's rich numismatic history ensures that coins will remain an essential part of its cultural and economic landscape. Now what do you say we get into the coin that you guys are all here to find out about and that is the 1991 Nwaita Mint 1 Rupee. Now the obverse of this coin features the Ahsoka Lion Capital, the national emblem of India. It includes the Lion Capital mounted on a base with the word Satyamev Jayat inscribed below in the Devnagari script. This phrase means truth alone triumphs and is the national motto of India. The reverse side of the coin typically displays an image of a stalk or wheat. This design signifies India's agricultural economy and is often accompanied by the words India in Latin script. Above the emblem, you'll usually find the denomination and the numeral 1 and also Devanagari script which stands for rupee. The 1 rupee coin is among the lower denomination coins in India and has seen significant circulation. It's commonly used for small transactions and also given as change. Due to its low face value, these coins are often used and usually do not have significant intrinsic value. But on the rare occasion, the coin heavens do open up and bless us with an amazing numismatic treasure 
like this very special 1991 one rupee Nwida mint coin. The one rupee coin minted in 1991 holds a special place in Indian numismatics. Produced at the esteemed Nwida mint, it carries a weight of approximately 6 grams. This coin's uniqueness and value stem from a combination of factors. First, its rarity arises from a limited mintage, which adds to its desirability among collectors and enthusiasts alike. Additionally, a significant number of these coins have been withdrawn from circulation over time, making them even more scarce. Now, when it comes to determining its market worth, the 1991 one rupee coin exhibits a wide range in value. Factors like the coin's state of preservation, surface quality, and any unique characteristics can influence its final price. So this coin not only carries historical significance as a one rupee denomination, but also boasts a captivating story of rarity and demand, making it a cherished piece for collectors who appreciate both its intrinsic and historical value. Now before we do get into the value of this coin, let's go over some of the specifications of any of these are off and might indicate that it is not an authentic example. The country of issue is India. The period is from the Republic of India, which is 1950 to date. The type is a standard circulation coin. It is from the year 1991. It has a face value of one rupee. The composition is copper nickel, which is 75% copper, 25% nickel. It has a weight of six grams, a diameter of 26 millimeters, a thickness of 1.47 millimeters. The shape of the coin is round. The technique used to produce these coins is they are milled and the coin's orientation or die axis is in metal alignment, as is the standard for Canadian, Indian, Australian, and British coinage. Now, in terms of value, these do command a slight premium on the low end, mostly due to their limited production, but a super important thing to keep in mind is the day-to-day -day life and economy in many parts of India is not the same as Western society, so these coins may not be considered quite as valuable depending on which region you are in, or if you're in a village or a big city. Usually your best chance to get the most amount of money out of these coins would be to possibly send them to a relative in another country to be graded, like Britain, Canada, the United States, or Europe. Coins are generally more appreciated for their numismatic value in places like that, so selling a coin with such a low mintage may be a little bit easier than finding a coin dealer in India who will pay you that kind of money for this coin. Now I am from Canada, so I am not 100% sure what the culture and climate of coin collecting is like in India, but being a former part of the British Empire and having such a long and storied history, when it comes to their coinage, I can't help but feel like Canada and India's coinage is not too far off from one another. I'm not too sure if coin collecting is popular in India, and if not, there's no reason why people from India can't enjoy the thrill of collecting and hunting rare coins from their own country and possibly making some money off of them. So all of that being said, if you found one of these 1991 one rupees from the Noida Mint and it did score in the MS range, meaning it is almost in perfect condition and has seen no wear or circulation, this coin can actually be worth up to $500 Canadian or American or up to 30,000 rupees. If it was to score between an MS67 or an MS70, it could command even higher premiums. So whether you're looking through your pocket change taking a vacation, or buying a big old bag of foreign coins, this is definitely a good one to have on your radar. Mexico is actually quite the bustling economic hub. They're not just known for their tasty tacos and vibrant culture, they mean business. Now when we talk about the role of coins in Mexico, they play a crucial part in everyday life. From the corner taqueria to the grand markets, coins are the unsung heroes of transactions. Now why is that? Because they're perfect for small scale purchases. You're not going to buy a sombrero with a credit card, you've got centavos and pesos making their rounds. Centavos are like the small little change in your pocket, just like cents back in the United States or Canada. They come in 5, 10, 20, and 50 centavos. And then you've got pesos. They are like the bigger brother to the centavos, ranging from 1 to 50 pesos. These coins are the go-to for daily transactions and expenses. If you've ever wondered where Mexican coins are produced, the Mexican Mint or Casa Dominita de Mexico is the place. It's like the birthplace of these coins. You can actually find it in Mexico City where they've been minting coins for centuries. It's a mix of tradition and cutting edge technology. Once these coins are minted, they hit the road. They're distributed through banks, businesses, and everyday transactions. Mexico's economy is still very much a cash society. While digital payments are growing, cash is king, especially in rural areas. 
People rely on coins and banknotes for day-to-day -day transactions and expenses. Mexican pesos have a history that date back to the 16th century when Mexico was all about Spanish vibes. Back then they didn't actually call them pesos, but it was referred to as the Spanish dollar and they were also known as pieces of eight. Now when you fast forward to the year 1822, when Mexico gained its independence, they started minting their very own Mexican coins. These coins come in all shapes and sizes, the smaller centavos coins are perfect for grabbing a quick snack or hopping on public transport, but then you have the big leagues, the peso coins themselves. These come in 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, and even 50 peso denominations. They often showcase Mexican heroes, landmarks, or historical events on the front. People often use these coins for everyday spending. Mexican peso coins are all about the little details, but here's the scoop. Some peso coins are actually like hidden treasure. They make special coins to commemorate big events or anniversaries in Mexican history, and sometimes collectors go crazy for these. So it's always a good idea to keep your eyes open whether you live in Mexico or are taking a trip down there because there's always the possibility of stumbling across one of these gems and being able to make some pretty good money. Mexican peso coins aren't just bits of metals, they're part of Mexico's soul. They carry the stories of battles for freedom, the country's vibrant culture, and the legends who shaped its country. They're like tangible pieces of Mexico's past and present. Now, what do you say we get into the coin that you are all here to find out about, and that is the 10 peso coin from the year 2007 with inverted denticles. Now, to identify this coin, you first need to inspect near the rim. Take a close look at the rim. Denticles are small, tooth-like projections on the rim of a coin. In the case of the Mexican 2007 10 peso coin with inverted denticles, you should be looking for denticles that appear upside down or inverted compared to the usual orientation. To confirm that you do have the variety with inverted denticles, it's helpful to have a regular 10 peso coin from the same year for comparison. Hold them side by side and check if the denticles on the coin in question appear to be oriented differently. Now I am from Canada and if I had an area of expertise it would probably be Canadian coins and I have seen denticles of all shapes and sizes but none that are as interesting or unique as the denticles on these Mexican coins. The lines almost reminds me kind of of like a Mayan or an Aztec design and it is very unique and definitely cool, not something that you see every day. Now to be absolutely certain that this is the variety that you think it is, consider having the coin authenticated by a reputable coin grading service. They can verify its authenticity and also provide more information about its rarity, grade, and value. Now before we do get into the potential value for this coin, let's go over some of the specifications of any of these are off. It may indicate the coin is not authentic. The coin was issued by the country of Mexico. It was produced during the United Mexican States or Mexican Republic period, which is 1823 to date. It is a standard circulation coin. The 10 peso coin was produced between 1997 and 2023. The value is 10 pesos. The value of a 10 peso coin in Canadian is 79 cents currently today as I'm making this video. The currency is the new peso, which is from 1992 to date. This is a bimetallic coin, very similar to the Canadian toonie. The core is composed of 65% copper, 10% nickel, 25% zinc, and the outer ring is composed of 92% copper, 6% aluminum, 2% nickel. The weight of the coin is 10.33 grams. It has a diameter of 28 millimeters, a thickness of 2.3 millimeters. The shape is round. The technique used to produce the coin is it is milled and the orientation is in coin alignment as is the standard for most United States coinage. Now in terms of value, I had a bit of difficulty coming across high end values for this coin, but I can definitely confirm that it does hold some value on the low end. It can be worth around $6.20 American for a VF example, which isn't quite at the very bottom of the Sheldon scale, but it is actually a pretty beat up and worn example. So that tells you right there that this coin is pretty sought after, especially for the modern Mexican pesos. If you found one of these in good condition and is scored in the low MS range, you can probably get around $25 to $30 American. But if you did find one and it scored between MS67 and MS70, which is much more common, 
from coins from the United States, Mexico, Australia, and Britain. If it does get that high MS attribution between 67 and 70, you could easily be talking a $200 US coin or more. This is a coin that is only 15 years old, so finding one of these is definitely not impossible as long as you keep your eyes open. Now before we get into the 2004 Finnish 2 Euro coin, first let's give you guys some information on Euros. Now there are 8 different denominations of Euro coins, ranging from the petite 1 cent all the way to the mighty 2 Euro. Each denomination of Euro coin has a unique design on one side, representing various aspects of European culture and history. These coins not only serve as a means of payment, but also offer a glimpse into the rich diversity of the European continent. Now Euros are actually fairly modern coins making their debut in the year 2002. Something that's really interesting about Euro coins is they actually have a shared backside featuring a map of Europe. But when it comes to the designs on the front of the coin, each country within the European Union actually has the freedom to express their own designs and artistic flair on the coins. From the ancient Greeks to the Romans, Europeans have a long history of using coins as a form of currency. These coins not only served as a means of payment, but also reflected the cultural and artistic expressions of their time. With the introduction of the Euro coins, this tradition continued in a modern and unified way, with each country within the Eurozone showcasing its heritage and creativity through the designs of its individual coins, creating a diverse and visually captivating collection. Now when it comes to the minting process for these euros, it's like a secret club where only certain national mints can get a golden ticket. They have fairly strict quotas and mintages to control the amount and flow of euro coins in circulation. The designs on the obverse of the coins are picked at a national level, but the European Central Bank chooses the designs for the reverse or shared side of the coin. In Europe, there were an estimated 141 billion coins in circulation as of December 2021. In contrast, since 1983, with the current copper-plated zinc metallic composition was introduced, the United States has struck almost 300 billion pennies. According to the Euro area's population estimate of 341.9 million, there are around 199 one cent or two cent coins and 215 other coins for every other person. Every year, approximately 100,000 fake euros are removed from circulation and a similar amount is recovered before being released. Counterfeit coins are quite uncommon given the 56 billion coins in circulation worldwide. Though counterfeits have been found for every issuing nation, over half of them bear the German national design. 60% of counterfeit coins in 2011 were actually two euros. The remainder were mostly 1 euros and a few 50 cent coins. While more counterfeit 1 euro and 50 cent coins are being discovered each year, counterfeit 2 euro coins are becoming less common. Now what do you say we get into the coin that you guys are all here for, the 2004 Finnish 2 euro coin. The 2004 Finnish 2 euro is a highly sought after and valuable collector's item. This coin, which was issued by Finland, commemorates the enlargement of the European Union in 2004. Some rare euros become rare not because they are limited in number, but rather because they are subject to the market law of supply and demand. This rare Finnish 2 euro was minted in 1 million and distributed only on Finnish territory, and then eventually mixed in with other coins and circulated, hence the difficulty of finding them and the great demand from collectors who are willing to pay between 35 and 50 euros for even a low mint state example of this coin. These rare and limited Finnish 2 euro coins have become highly sought after by collectors due to their limited distribution and scarcity, and as time has gone on finding high grade examples has become much more difficult. The combination of their unique origin and also the market forces of supply and demand has driven up their value significantly. The obverse of the coin features a common design shared by all Eurozone countries. It displays a map of Europe with the 12 stars of the European Union encircling the map. The reverse side of the coin features a unique design representing Finland. Finland has released various designs on its 2 euro coins over the years, often featuring national symbols or historic references. Some of the details and specifications for this coin, the country of origin is Finland, the denomination is 2 euros, the material, typically the outer ring is composed of copper nickel, while the inner core is composed of nickel brass. 
The standard weight for a two euro coin is approximately 8.5 grams. The diameter is around 25.75 millimeters. Many two euro coins have a smooth edge with the coin's denomination and also the country's name inscribed, but some may have alternate edges and designs or inscriptions as well. In terms of value, unfortunately, this isn't a coin that is going to make you instantly rich or that you can retire from, but it is a fairly recent or modern coin being less than 20 years old as I am making this video, which in the world of coin collecting and numismatics is the mere blink of an eye. These coins have already significantly increased in value over time and definitely have the potential to be worth some really good money in a few decades. PCGS lists an MS67 example as having sold for 120 US dollars or about 60 euros in a previous auction. Something else to keep in mind is that the Sheldon scale is a 70 point system and when you submit coins to PCGS or NGC, they will score your coin out of 70. It is very rare that coins from Canada will score above 67, but it is much more common for coins from the United States, Australia, Britain, and even Euros to score between 67 and 70. So if you did find one of these and it scored an MS68 or MS69, you could see some pretty decent price jumps and maybe even get up into the $500 or around the 250 euro mark. There have been some other listings in auctions and even on eBay where I have seen some larger numbers and prices realized, but unfortunately, modern era larger denomination coinage usually won't bring the crazy premiums that some of the smaller and older coins can. But they are still great to have on your radar and keep on the side because you never know when the value of one of these coins can take off just like the stock market and something you had that was only worth a few dollars or euros can now be worth thousands or more. Prior to decimalization, the United Kingdom used a complex currency system that included pounds, shillings, also referred to as bob, and pence. For example, there were 20 shillings in a pound and 12 pence in a shilling. Decimalization had been considered for many years to simplify the currency system and align it with international standards. Extensive planning and public education efforts were undertaken, and the big change occurred on February 15, 1971, also known as Decimal Day in the United Kingdom. On this day, Britain officially adopted the decimal currency system and the pound was actually retained and the shilling and pence were replaced with new pence. New coins were introduced, including the 1, 2, 5, 10, and 50 pence coins, as well as the 1 pound coin in later years. Extensive public awareness campaigns and education efforts were conducted to help people understand and adapt to the new decimal currency. Both the old and new currencies were in circulation for a period to ease the transition. Old shillings and pence gradually disappeared from everyday use. While the currency system changed, some traditional terms like quid for pounds and penny for pence persist in colloquial language. The two pence coin is a denomination of sterling coinage that is worth two one hundredth of a pound. It has quite a history dating back to its introduction on February 15, 1971, which coincided with the decimalization of the British currency system. From its inception, the obverse of the two pence coin has featured the profile of Queen Elizabeth II. Notably, there have been four different portraits of Queen Elizabeth II over the years. It's also interesting to note that in the year 1992, there was a significant change in the coin's composition. Transitioning from bronze to copper-plated steel, on the reverse or tail side of the two pence coin, the original design by Christopher Ironside was used from 1971 until 2008. It showcased the badge of the Prince of Wales featuring a plume of ostrich feathers with a coronet, along with the German motto Ich Dien, meaning I serve. The numeral two was positioned below the badge and the wording new pence 1971 to 1981 or two pence from 1982 onward were displayed above. Another interesting little tidbit is at one point there were actually plans to mint an alternate version of the two pence coin representing Northern Ireland, but these plans were never fully realized. In August 2005, the Royal Mint in London held a competition to introduce new reverse designs for various circulating coins. The winning design, which was created by Matthew Dent and announced in April 2008, led to a significant redesign. The redesigned two pence coin depicted the second quarter of the Royal Shield, showcasing the lion rampant from the Royal Banner of Scotland. The words two pence were placed above the design, and this redesign removed the beating from both sides of the coin. 
The composition of the two pence coin is also worth mentioning. Initially from 1971 to 1992, these coins were made from bronze. However, due to the rising copper prices, a transition was made in the year 1992 to copper plated steel. In 1998, there was a single year where both alloys were actually used and minted. In May of 2006, the pre-1992 coins contained 3 pence worth of copper each and approximately 2.55 billion of these coins remained in circulation. The Royal Mint issued warnings against tampering with coinage as it's illegal to melt coins in the UK. The value of copper experienced significant fluctuations, particularly in the year 2008 when it dramatically fell from previous peaks, most likely due to a recession. Regarding its legal tender status, two pence coins are indeed legal tender, but with specific limitations. They are considered legal tender for amounts up to and including 20 pence. However, it's crucial to understand that legal tender in the United Kingdom has a narrow meaning. In the United Kingdom, legal tender pertains to the repayment of debts to creditors and not everyday transactions. It does not mean that a shopkeeper or business is obligated to accept a specific type of currency in payment they actually have the discretion to accept any form of payment that they prefer. From the year 1971 to 1981, a distinctive feature of all two pence coins was the inclusion of the phrase new pence on the reverse side. This change was a significant part of the United Kingdom's transition to a decimal currency system in 1971. However, an interesting twist occurred in 1982 and the years that followed. The inscription new pence was replaced with a simpler and more straightforward two pence inscription on the reverse side of the coins. This alteration aimed to make the currency even more user friendly. Now here's where the story gets very intriguing. In the year 1983, a unique situation unfolded. A small number of two pence coins were accidentally minted with the outdated new pence wording on their reverse sides. Some of these coins did find their way into circulation, however, they were not actually business strikes. Instead, they were included in specially curated sets designed for collectors. This unexpected anomaly created a certain level of excitement among British numismatists and coin enthusiasts. The 1983 British two pence coin with the new pence inscription became an extremely sought after collectible, showcasing how even small deviations in the minting process can lead to fascinating and valuable variations in the world of coin collecting. So basically to identify this coin, you wanna look at the obverse and check for the date 1983. And then when you flip over to the reverse side, if it has the outdated new pence inscription, then you have yourself one fairly rare coin. Some of the details and specifications for this piece, if any of these are off, it might indicate that the coin is not authentic. It is composed of bronze. It has a weight of 7.12 grams, a diameter of 25.9 millimeters, a thickness of 1.85 millimeters. The edge of the coin is smooth and the die axis is in metal alignment as is the standard for most British, Canadian and Australian coins. Now this coin is technically classified as a mule because two different dies were paired together, the die from the previous year for the reverse and the 1983 obverse die were paired together to create this coin. In terms of value, it can be worth 263 pounds for an MS62 and 527 pounds for an MS63. Now a super important thing to note is that British and Australian and American coins can usually score higher in the Sheldon scale. If you do get that high tier of grade, it will definitely bring a huge premium to the coin. So this one can easily be worth anywhere from a couple thousand to ten thousand dollars if you did manage to get one in a very high grade condition. It is a very rare coin and it was put out into collector sets, but that doesn't mean you can't ever find one of them in the wild. Australia, Canada, and Britain all share a symbiotic relationship when it comes to their coins and currency, but February 14, 1966 marked a monumental turning point for Australia. On this fateful day, the nation bid farewell to its age-old currency system, which was rooted in the British pound, shilling, and pence, and embarked on a bold expedition towards the modern decimal currency system that it now proudly flaunts. This transformation was no mere alteration, it was a seismic shift that encompassed various pivotal elements. As the Australian pound, which had long held sway as the primary currency, gracefully bowed out of the spotlight, it made way for the emergence of the Australian dollar. This new currency bearing the familiar name of dollars was ingeniously divided into 100 cents, echoing the global currency trends that were taking shape. 
With the adoption of the decimal system, it was inevitable that a new arsenal of coins would take center stage. This impressive ensemble included the 1 cent, 2 cent, 5 cent, 10 cent, 20 cent, and 50 cent coins, each of them a piece of numismatic innovation. However, it's worth noting that the sands of time continued to flow, the 1 and 2 cent coin gracefully bowed out of the scenes finding themselves relegated to the annals of coin history. New banknotes were also issued in varying denominations to cater to the diverse needs to the Australian populace. The modest $1 and $2 notes were soon joined by their more illustrious counterparts, the $5, $10, and $20 notes, and in subsequent years, the coveted $50 and $100 notes also made their splendid entrance. During this pivotal juncture, both the old pound shilling pence system and the new decimal system coexisted, akin to the old friend bidding farewell to a new one making a grand entrance. This effort was aimed at empowering citizens with the knowledge required to navigate this brave new financial world. The aim was not only to ensure a seamless transition, but also to foster a sense of comfort and familiarity with the novel currency. To quell any concerns about financial upheaval, existing savings and bank accounts underwent a meticulous transformation, evolving from pounds to dollars. Remarkably, the value essentially remained the same, thus maintaining the economic equilibrium. Australian coin decimalization was more than just an alteration. It was a profound leap forward in Australia's financial and economic evolution. It bestowed upon the nation the gift of simplicity in everyday transactions, endowing customers and businesses alike with a newfound ease in calculations. Today, the Australian dollar stands tall as one of the globe's prominent currencies, wielding its influence with grace and authority in international trade and finance. The Australian five cent coin, which was introduced on February 14, 1966, replaced the pre decimal six pence and has been the lowest denomination coin since the withdrawal of the one cent and two cent coins in 1992. Due to inflation, its purchasing power has steadily declined and as of 2018 represents only 0.27% of the minimum hourly wage for workers aged 21 and over. Typical of most Australian coins, the reverse side features a design of an iconic Australian animal while the obverse side displays Queen Elizabeth II. A commemorative 2016 coin marked the 50th anniversary of decimal currency. Despite its high mintage, the Australian 5 cent coin doesn't actually circulate well due to its low value similar to the Euro 1 cent coin. The lowest production run was 8.25 million in the year 1972 while the highest was 306.5 million in the year 2006. No coins were actually issued for circulation in the years 1985 and 1986, they were only minted for special edition proof and specimen sets. There have been many debates about removing this coin from circulation due to its low value and high production costs. In May 2007, its bullion value was around 6.5 cents, though there were no reports of hoarding or melting despite the potential 30% profit. Market prices as of June 2018 were about $7 per kilogram for copper and about $15 per kilogram for nickel, making the metal content worth 2.5 cents or 50% of its face value. The production cost in making these coins is reported to be 12 cents. In Australia, these 5 cent coins are legal tender for amounts owed up to $5 in debt payments. So now that we have given you guys some basic information on the Australian 5 cent coin, what do you say we get into the coin that you guys are all here for? And that is the 2007 double head. Now the Australian 5 cent coin with the double head air was minted in the year 2007. It's super important to note that this error is specific to the 2007 dated 5 cent coins. Now what makes this coin so special is instead of the regular design with Queen Elizabeth II on the obverse and the Enchedna on the reverse, this coin actually has the Queen's portrait on both sides of the coin. This is an extremely rare occurrence and the result of a minting error. The exact number of these coins in circulation is not precisely known, but due to their rarity, they are highly sought after by collectors. It's estimated that only a very limited number of these coins were actually produced, making them a highly valuable find. Collectors of air coins find this particular coin highly desirable due to its uniqueness. 
Aircoins often command high prices in the numismatic market, especially when they involve a significant deviation from the standard design. Now, before we get into the value, let's go over some of the specifications. The 2007 Air you are looking for will come in a rotated, incorrect alignment, usually resembling coin alignment, but there may be deviations in the orientation of the obverse and reverse. But the most important thing is that this piece has the obverse die design on both faces of the coin. Now some of the specifications, it was minted at the Canberra Mint, it is composed of 75% copper and 25% nickel, it has a weight of 2.83 grams, a diameter of 19.4 millimeters, the obverse was designed and engraved by Ian Rank Broadley, and the reverse was designed and engraved by Stuart Devlin, and the edge of the coin is milled. Now in the past, I have discussed a few of the Australian, British, American, and Canadian coins that you can find that can be worth some buku crazy amounts of money, but usually the sad fact and reality of coin collecting is it's the older pieces and the specimen pieces and the holy grails that are worth a lot of money. But this one is actually a modern coin. It is from the year 2007. So there is a decent chance if you are from Australia that you could find one of these if you are a coin roll hunter or coin collector. Now, in terms of value, this is definitely one of the most valuable modern Australian coins that I have covered on my channel. It can be worth around $3,300 for an MS-60 example. It can be worth $5,600 for an MS-63 example, which as far as I can tell is the highest graded known example. But if you were to find one of these and it scored around an MS-65, you could easily be talking a $10,000 coin. And another super important thing to note is that it's much more common for Australian, British, and American coins to score from MS67 to MS70. Canadian coins rarely surpass the MS67 mark. I'm not quite sure why. If any of you guys have any information or theories on that, I would love to know down in the comments. But for whatever that reason is, Australian coins seem to have a higher chance of getting those higher grade tiers which can also add to the premium of this coin. So if you found one of these and it scored in an MS68, MS69, then you could be talking a $20,000, $30,000 error coin right here. What do you guys think about the Australian five cent double head error? What would you ever do if you found a legitimate example or if you ever have found any of the coins discussed in this video, let me know down in the comments. I would love to know. I would also really appreciate it if you guys would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also ring that bell notification so you can stay up to date with my new content. I have a whole lot of awesome videos planned where I'm going to be breaking down all of the rare and valuable coins from Australia, Canada, Britain, the United States, and many other countries. So make sure to stay tuned for all of those. But I think this is pretty much going to do it for this one, folks. So until the next one, everybody, peace out and have a good one, folks.